everybody I'm Rachel from Rachel cooks with love I'm really excited today because I'm going to fix one of my favorite dishes got a lot of favorite ones but this one is really one of my favorites and that's caldo de pescado camarón that's fish and shrimp soup my sister and my brother-in-law went up to visit my Ron and I in Ohio and he requested this and I made it for him but he was so busy watching the football game that he didn't watch me make it. So this is for him. Let's get started. My Ron loves to go fishing. And we usually keep plenty of uh, red snapper in our big freezer. And we keep shrimp in there because we're so close to the Gulf. And we're very, very blessed to be close to the Gulf. And to be close to Mexico where I can find all the herbs and all the dried chilies and things that I need. So today, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put these Roma tomatoes to boil. I've got five here, and I've already removed the core. And I've got a fourth of a, an onion. And it was a large onion, so it's about a fourth. And I've got two guajillo peppers. Now, I love these guajillo peppers. They're not hot. They just give a real smoky, sweet-like taste to the food. I removed all the seeds and I cleaned them and they're perfect and ready to go. And then I've got three garlic cloves. So I've got some boiling water over here and I'm going to go ahead and put them to boil. And I'm going to boil them for about 10 minutes. Once it comes up to a boil, I'll boil them for about 10 minutes. I've got about 15 or 16 shrimp, I think it is here, and I've had them in cold water all day in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean them out. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna cut off the tails, and I've got a colander right here. I'm just gonna drop them in there, and I'm gonna remove the feet and the shells. Now, a lot of people leave the, the shells on. I don't like that. I like to take them off, and I use them. I need them later. And then I'm going to devein them. I usually just make a little slit up here at the top, like that. That little intestine that's out there. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in here. So I do cut off the little tails. I'm going to put them in there because I'm going to use them later. The shells, the little feet, and everything. This is probably one of the most boring parts. The rest is all fun. And then it's delicious at the end. I just make the little slit up here at the top like this. And sometimes it's not there. See, nice and clean. These are beautiful shrimp that my Ron brought from the island. Oh my gosh. We were like, I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it when he brought him from over there because they were beautiful. And they freeze so good if you freeze them. They freeze really good too. So you just make a little slit up here at the top, take it to the end, and then you want to remove that intestine and leave them nice and clean like that. and clean. My shrimp are nice and clean and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these skins and everything that I removed, all the little tails, all the little feet. 
right in here. And this is what I'm going to make my little stock with. So, I'm going to melt a little bit of butter. This is about two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to melt it just like that. See? I'm going to put my onions in there. Just a few pieces, like a fourth of a small onion. Like that. Mmm, I love the way onions smell when, when they're sautéing. I want to release the flavor of the onions. You know, shrimp and fish soup needs a lot of flavor. So the onions, the garlic, the guajillo peppers, the tomato, you know, all of these shells, all this gives it that taste that we're looking for. So I'll saute that just for a little bit. Like that. And I like it in butter. I like it in butter better than I do in in um, vegetable oil or even olive oil. I like it in butter. As soon as they start to wilt just for a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add some dried shrimp. Now, these are not my favorite in any way for anything other than for this. I like them here. So I'm going to add that. That's about a half a cup. And then just like that. Just going to stir them around. And they're sizzling. And they're releasing flavor. Especially the little dried shrimp. They're releasing flavor in there. See? And I like to bring it up to a nice high heat. So they can do what they're going to do. It's about this time when I'm going to add... I've got a small clove of garlic. I'm going to add it in our garlic clove. And they're sizzling in the butter. The garlic is at the bottom and it's sizzling and releasing its flavor. The onions are releasing their flavor. That's what's going to give this soup a very good taste. Mmm, I can smell the garlic. So now what I'm going to do is add some water. I would say that's about two cups. And I'm going to let it come up to a boil. I'm going to cover it. Let it come up to a boil. Like medium low. And then... It's been about 12 minutes. My tomatoes, my guajillo peppers, my onions are all ready, so I'm going to get them off the heat. And I'm going to let them sit there for just a little bit. I just finished preparing my marinade for my shrimp. What I put in here is about half a cup of orange juice, just regular store-bought orange juice. And I put in about a teaspoon of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. Put a little salt and a little pepper and a teaspoon of vinegar. So I've got my shrimp in the refrigerator and I'm going to go ahead and marinate it. Here's my shrimp. And I'm going to go ahead and just let it sit in there. In a little while... I will add my fish. My tomatoes, 
my guajillo peppers, the onions, and the garlic have been sitting here for a while, and they're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put them in my blender. Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you something about my blender. Can you see how antique this little blender is? Do you know that my mom gave me this blender? I'm thinking about 25 years ago. And for that reason, I have not gotten a new blender. A new anything. Because it works super well. And she gave it to me. So, anyway, I'm going to add everything that I boiled in here. Just like that. You know how it is when you're your mom, your anybody, a friend, a family member, when they give you something, you know, it's just, it's special. You can't let it go. Now in here, I'm also going to add half a cup of Clamato juice. Like that. And I'm going to add the same of tomato juice. Just be eight. I've got two chipotle peppers here from the can. And I'm going to add them in there just to give it a little kick. So I'm going to add the two. Mm. Oh, they smell wonderful. These have a little, they can be very spicy. But two is perfect for, for this. And then I'm going to add two teaspoons of flour. Like that. And just a little bit of water. Just like that. And that's it. So I'm going to set it aside, just for a little bit. These are my red snapper fillets. Aren't they beautiful? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and cut them right at the center, like that. And then I'm just going to cut them into, I don't want to say bite-sized pieces. And you know the good thing about red snapper is, one thing that you need to consider is using a good fish because um, you want to use a fish that's not going to fall apart. Like uh, cod is one, some people use tilapia, and uh, some people use a good catfish. I like to use red snapper. Now many years ago, I, was, I got to use tilapia and some catfish or so on. But then it's been a while now that I've been using red snapper since my Ron has been catching them. So red snapper does not fall apart and it is fantastic. So this is my shrimp from the refrigerator that is marinated. Marinating. So I'm going to add that in there. Just like that. And I'm just going to let it sit in the refrigerator for another little while. I'm going to go ahead and add about, oh, I would say about two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon or two of olive oil. Just gonna let them melt a little bit, the butter like that. I'm gonna add one garlic clove, it's about a medium one, just to add it, to give it some a good flavor to the oil. Mmm, and you can smell it right away. This soup is all about flavor. 
so I'm going to leave my garlic clove in there for just a little bit. Not too long, because you don't want to burn it. But you do want it to release some of that garlic flavor. Mmm. See? Oh, the butter and the garlic together. And you don't want it real high because you don't want to burn it. It's just kind of like a medium, medium low. Just enough to give it just a tiny little bit of a sizzle. Just a little bit like that. Now I'm going to raise it to about medium. I'm going to remove my garlic clove. I'm going to add my celery. And I've got uh, two and a half celery ribs in there. Let them release their flavor. And they do release flavor when they're in the butter and the oil like that. The olive oil. I'm going to add my carrots. And I've got uh, three medium small carrots now i'm going to add my onions i've got seven little green onions in here with most of their green stem in there Can you see that? Mmm. Just saute them around a little bit. Just so that they can release some of their flavor. And You know, if they're in, in the oil, they're releasing flavor. And here are my spices. I have about an eighth. I never measured. I would just get a pinch, but I measured today just to know. So I've got about an eighth of marjoram and an eighth of thyme and two bay leaves. So I'm going to add two bay leaves in there. I'm going to add the marjoram and the thyme. Oh my gosh. And the second you drop them in there, you can smell it. So aromatic, just, oh my gosh, just wonderful. Just for a little bit like that. I'll put the leaves down there at the bottom like that. So that they can sizzle in the butter and in the olive oil. And I can see the margarine is down there, and so is the thyme. It smells it's unique and wonderful. Just like that. Now, I'm going to drain my potatoes. I've got two medium potatoes here, and I like the little golden ones. They don't fall apart that easy. They're kind of like the little red ones. They don't fall apart. Just gonna drain them like that. And I'm gonna add them in there. Like that. Move them around. Now here is that mix that I had made earlier. I'm gonna pour it in here. Oh my gosh. Like that. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher and then just to a quick little boil, then I'll bring it down. While that sits in there and releases its flavor, now I'm going to put this in there. Remember the 
the shrimp shells and the little feet and it's got the dried shrimp and all that. Now it's time for this. It's been sitting in there and just the onions with the garlic, it's just been releasing its flavor. So, you see how it's coming up to a boil? Slowly, slowly coming up to a little boil. There it is. Now I'm going to add this. Every drop. And with my little molcajete stone, I'm just going to grind it just like that. You want to squeeze it out. See? And you will discard this, of course. So you won't add that. Now to this, I'm going to add a little bit of water, say about a cup of water in there. I'm going to let it come up to a boil and then I'm going to bring it down. Then I'm going to add my pepper and my salt. I've just let it come up to a low boil. Now I'm gonna add my shrimp bouillon. I've got a tablespoon in here, but I'm gonna add about three fourths of it. Like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of pepper or a little less. Just a little bit to your liking. Look at that. And I'm not putting in the whole bouillon and the whole amount of salt that I may use. So I'm going to let it boil on low for about 15 minutes or so until the vegetables are just right. And then I will taste it again and readjust. My vegetables are almost perfect. They're about five minutes short of being just perfect. So it's at this time that I'm going to add my fish and my shrimp. Here is my fish and my shrimp. They've been marinating in the refrigerator all this time. So I'm going to go ahead and Put them in there together. Sometimes I add the marinade in there because it's so good. It's just orange juice and shrimp. I mean, uh, orange juice, a little bit of vinegar, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. I had tasted it just before and it didn't need any more of the shrimp bouillon. I ended up using, I think it was like a teaspoon and a, maybe not even a teaspoon and a little bit. I didn't have to add hardly any. So I'm going to let this continue to uh, cook in there. I'm going to add my cilantro. Not my Ron's favorite, but oh my gosh, it needs it. Now in Ohio, I could not find this. This is a pasote. It's just, just so delicious in this soup. So I'm going to add it at this time also, just like that. 
Now, since my fish and my shrimp were very cold, because they were in the refrigerator, I'm going to go ahead and let it come up to a boil. And as soon as it comes up to a boil, I'm going to let it sit, lower it to low for just five minutes. You don't want to overcook your shrimp or your fish. So I'm going to cover it up as soon as it comes to a light boil. And it's coming up. It's just coming up right there. And you, this is at the time when you have to adjust your salt, uh, your water if you want it a little bit soupier. Um, also, depending on your pot, like it only took about 15 minutes, almost exactly, for my vegetables to be ready. Whereas if I had used another pot, because this is a Lake Crusade and it's cast iron, so it comes up really quick. But depending on what pot you're using, you know, just check it out. Taste, you know, get a little carrot, little piece of potato and check it out. When you feel that it's just like maybe five minutes short of being ready, then that's the time when you add your shrimp and your fish. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it up for just five minutes. It's been five minutes, and our soup is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get this epazote out. We can turn it off. You don't wanna let it overcook. Now comes the good part. Look at this. Look at that. See? Look at that. See the shrimp? Five minutes is all you need. And here's the fish. Carrots. Cilantro. Mmm. And you know this dish, I'm going to give it at least a minute. This dish is perfect with Maybe you can have some white rice on the side. I didn't fix any rice only because we had rice today for lunch. So I didn't fix any rice, but you can have some white rice or some, you know, Mexican rice on the side. Or you can just have it by itself. You can have it with corn tortillas. You can have it with a bolillo. I like it with salting crackers. Here are my salting crackers. See? I love it with salting crackers. This looks very hot. Oh my gosh. And it smells heavenly. Oh. I was going to tell you that. If you don't think you're going to like it. it's I don't like spicy food. I don't. Just a little tiny bit I do. But I can't handle it. This is just a little bit just right, but if you say, oh, I'm not too sure, then I would add just one of the, of the, <laughs> the chipotle peppers. I was like, what was I going to say? One of the chipotle peppers. I put two, but you could put just one, but it's got a real smoky taste, so it just goes in there.
I wish you were here. I wish you were here to taste this. Mm. Oh my gosh. I just want to eat it so quick. Mmm. Mmm. I was going to say, mmm, oh my gosh, it's perfect in all the spices. You can adjust your salt, a little more water if you want it soupier, but I don't think you'll need any more water than that. Look at that. See? It's just the perfect amount, amount of soup in there. Well... I hope you like my fish and shrimp soup, my pescado and camarón, caldito. Let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Send me a comment. Ask me a question. And let me know what you think. Thank you.